안녕하십니까? 이조은 치과의 손영희입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Son Young Hee of Eagle Dental Clinic. Today I want to look at a live surgery case. As shown, the patient was wearing RPD in the upper and the lower. The patient's condition was like this. The bridge that connects number 34 and 36 was like this, and this led to extensive bone loss, and there was severe mobility. The patient could not use it anymore. The panoramic image is as shown. If you look at the CT in number 34, buckle bone is completely lost and it looks as if it's floating. There's a bit of resorption in lingual plate, but there's a still residual bone. If you look at number 6, as shown, you, you can see that there's a very little buckle bone left and there's loss of lingual plate, but there's residual basal bone. If you look at the pre-op image, it's connected via bridge perigingival swelling, redness, and exudates were observed. The decision was to extract number 34 and 36. We need to make a decision here as shown on the x-ray. Inspection will be done to see if there's any distal bone left in number 33 if there's residual bone. Number 33 will not be touched upon. Implants will be placed in number 34 and 36 if there's moderate to severe bone loss in number 33. If we are to do GBR and leave this tooth untouched, there can be issues. Therefore, if that were the case, number 33 would need to be extracted and implants would need to be placed in number 33 and 36 like this.
there.
Did you enjoy the video? To give you a conclusion, number 33 was without major problems, so extraction was not done. Only number 34 and 36 were extracted. Let's take a review. Extractions were performed, and below you can see there's oral epithelium, and it has undergone a lot of changes, and you can see granulation tissue. Flap was reflected. Without reflecting flap, I decided surgery would not be possible. You can see a lot of granulation tissue attached to the flap, and in these cases, it is best to do thorough debridement, but based on my experience, removing it 100% is realistically impossible. Even if you're unable to do 100%, it does not affect the bone regeneration. However, it is better to do thorough debridement. I have done a new job here, and you can see buccal plate is completely resorbed. In number four, implant was placed and AOS large particle was used for buccal augmentation graft and socket graft. After bone graft, collagen membrane was used for stabilization. Suture was completed. If you look at post-op x-ray, implants are placed in number four and six. And in number six, you can see that this is nine millimeter healing abutment. I've used a seven millimeter first, but it was submerged, so I used a nine millimeter here. The reason being, the implant has been placed more deep vertically. I wanted to place the implant more deeper than the buccal dehiscence defect. As a result, I've used long healing abutment. I don't think this will affect the results in major ways. However, if you use long healing abutment, it can affect the emergence profile of the implant. Because the transgingival portion becomes too long, there can be issues related to self-cleansing. I don't plan on doing second surgery, but if this becomes a problem, I intend to do debulking. I've performed immediate implant placement and severely damaged the socket with transmucosal GBR today. When we do immediate implant placement, we need to consider the fact that this is an inflammatory wound. Compared with a general immediate implant placement, we need to think of a potential graft material resorption or secondary infection. In this case, you need to use a graft material that resorbs slowly. I think it is more favorable to use a xenograft. Additionally, in order to prevent secondary infection, antibiotics should be applied sufficiently. Thank you for watching the live surgery clip.